What's going on guys, welcome to the video. Now this is going to be a long one, so grab a beer or whatever floats your boat and sit back. As some of you may know, the Labour MP and Shadow Minister John Ashworth had a phone call leaked with someone who was his friend, where he admits in frank terms the Labour Party has abandoned its rural heartlands, which has of course decimated Labour's chances of winning this election. He also blames Corbyn on multiple occasions, along with the party's stance on Brexit, for its current woes. And to top it off, admits that the civil service will hide sensitive information from Jeremy Corbyn if he wins the election, because rightly, they don't trust him. Now, as if the leaked phone call wasn't enough, which we will take a look at in a minute, Jonathan Ashworth appeared on the BBC Politics live show a few hours after this story broke with Ian Dale, which we will also take a look at some clips from in a minute, because he actually thinks claiming he was joking during the leaked phone call is a believable story. Since you will hear it in his voice, this guy is clearly not joking. He is being dead honest. Maybe too honest, since the guy who leaked it was his friend. So a bit of a shit move by him, but juicy nonetheless. Let's check it out. What should, what should them think that Labour's going to get smashed? Well, I mean, anyone in the sort of middle, uh, the, 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 the middle, outside of the sort of city, city seats, uh, you know, if you're in sort of small town Midlands and North, it's abysmal out there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they don't, they, they don't like uh, Johnson, but they can't stand Corbyn and they think Labour's blocked Brexit. Yeah. Um, now, what Jonathan Ashworth said in that clip is something we already knew, but it's good to hear from a Labour MP and Shadow Cabinet Minister himself. The horse's mouth and all that. Corbyn and Brexit outside of the cities has decimated the Labour vote. And, to be honest, he has likely lost some of them from within the cities, but not as much to matter like it does in the Labour heartlands. It's really not starting out well for Labour, this phone call, since he has already blamed Corbyn once, and it won't be the last time reasonably confident and certainly optimistic that the Tories will get a majority. Um, but I just think that if if Corbyn became Prime Minister and if it's a, if it's any sort of... Um, basically, if the Tories got anything less than 350, I don't see how he can't be Prime Minister. Um, you know, even if just for a short while. I just think that the cost would be so... I mean, even on the first 24 hours, you know, Sterling goes down from a minute past ten on the exit poll on the Thursday. Um, you know, stock markets crash, or at least, you know, any company that's going to get nationalised or supplier companies that get nationalised loses a ton of value first thing in the morning. All the Five Eyes guys, you know, sort of start making noises about pulling back in the morning. That's before he's even got a seals of office. I, mean, I, I don't think it's like, I think it's like a 10% chance, maybe more, of him actually having a workable administration, but the, the cost is, you know, we've talked about this before, I mean, he's, he's just up to it, and, you know, when I said before about having, and this is just for us, but when I said before about having, you know, tickets booked on the Eurostar for, for 10 to 11 that night, if he comes in, I'm, you know, I'm quite serious, you know, we, we're trying to work out what we could put in a suitcase if, if you know, to get out of the country, in case there's, you know, uh, capital controls or anything. But I, I mean, I, I mean, I just, I just can't see happening. So, I mean, I, it, it wouldn't surprise me, for the sake of argument, that if Labour held somewhere like Canterbury because of sort of middle class kind of Guardian reading people, but then the Tories take balls over mm. of Labour. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all because it, it, the, the sort of the electoral map is being sort of is, is sort of being going topsy turvy because of Brexit, but and because of Corbyn. Um, question is for Labour, it gets itself a half-decent leader next time round, whether it can reverse and regain its sort of traditional sort of heart and seats. Uh, yeah. I, just cannot, I, I just can't see, I, I, I just can't see how you don't have a majority, to be honest. Well, Ashworth's friend points out the chaos that would arise from a Corbyn government within minutes of him being predicted as the winner in the sense that the pound will nosedive, along with companies Corbyn plans to nationalise, and of course the Five Eyes recoiling at the thought of letting Corbyn know anything, which amazingly, the Labour shadow minister does not refute, likely because he himself knows it to be true, as we all do. The leaker goes on to say he will have tickets booked if Corbyn wins the election, and wants to know how hard it will be to get his wealth out of the UK, as Corbyn might try to seize it, which once again, Ashworth does not refute. 
He just states that he can't see it happening because of Brexit and Corbyn. And the only thing for them now is how quickly they can sort this mess out once they get rid of Corbyn and get a new decent leader in. But to be honest, I doubt they can, given the people who are lined up to lead them next. Corbyn in a skirt is very possible. But let's move on to the next clip. Well, I, I think if, you know, if Labour had a half-decent leader two years ago, he'd be you know, 40 points ahead. Um, but could you, is there any reassurance you can give me as to what would sensible Labour MPs do to stop Corbyn actually getting the seals of office on the, Is there anything that would happen or is it just have to sort of hold? Because we fucked it up. We fucked it up in 2016. Yeah. When we, we went too early, uh, people like me were internally saying this isn't the right moment, uh, but I got kind of ignored. Yeah. Went too early, and uh, so now I'm afraid. But I don't think we're going to get there. I just can't see it. <laughs> I mean, I went back in places like Mansfield and Ashfield and... So Ashworth's friend thinks the Labour Party could have been miles ahead in the polls if they actually had a good leader two years ago. Before asking for any reassurances, he adds that moderate Labour MPs could prevent Corbyn taking office on Friday, which forces Jonathan to admit they fucked it up in 2016, referring to the failed attempt at overthrowing Jeremy Corbyn back in 2016 where you heard Jonathan Ashworth himself say it was too early to go for Corbyn when they did and no one listened to him saying it was too early, making it now too late for any moderates or Marxists for that matter to overthrow Corbyn before this election. It sounded to me that he essentially admitted to playing at least some role in the preparation of the 2016 overthrow attempt. I guess Jonathan Ashworth's anti-Corbyn sentiment has been around for a while. Can't blame him, to be honest, can you? Anyway, on to the next clip, because we're far from finished yet. Would it, would it, it's not going to happen, stop worrying, it's not going to happen. If he got in, would he be as bad as I expect? Uh, 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 um, I, I, um, I don't know. I think on the, secu I mean, on the security stuff, I mean, I've worked in number 10, I think the... I think the uh, the, the, the machine will pretty quickly move to safeguard security things. You know, I mean, I mean the civil service machine. So you reckon they, they wouldn't let them see stuff? Uh, but, I mean, but, you know, he's going to do it, you know, he wants, but it's not going to happen. I cannot see it happening. The pause by Ashworth at the start of that clip should tell you all you need to know. He himself cannot guarantee that Corbyn would not be as bad as everyone thinks he would be should he take office. As a shadow cabinet minister, he should defend his leader. But the fact is Corbyn, I guess, makes that impossible. Once again, we can't blame him. When he finally answers, he said he doesn't know, but from his time in number 10, he thinks the machine will safeguard security things from Corbyn meaning the civil service holding back information through fear of what might happen to it. Which is not a very good thing to hear a Labour MP say if you are the Labour leadership. But we all know it's likely true. Corbyn's friends are well known and should concern everyone in this country. But once again he ends that clip going back to it ain't gonna happen again. Not very confident is he? And likely for good reason, as we will hear next. So, let's move on. Yeah, as much as I'd love to sort of see go the right way from my perspective, I'm more worried about the national picture. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I've been going around these national places, it's dire for Labour. It's dire. Uh, uh, and my strategy is just to try and help as many of my colleagues back over the line. Um, I'm banging on about the NHS in their areas for them, but I just, it's, it's awful for them. Yeah. Uh, and it is, it's the combination of Corbyn and Brexit. So our leaker here is worried about the national picture, of course referring to the chance we end up with a Corbyn government on Friday the 13th, which will be named the Nightmare on Downing Street by the papers I'm sure. But once again, Jonathan Ashworth dispels that fear quickly, pointing out he has been going around nationally and it's absolutely dire for Labour, which has forced him to adopt the strategy that will get as many of his Labour colleagues over the line. Because, of course, Corbyn has decimated many of their chances of being re-elected, as you heard him say. He is forced to bang on about the NHS for them because of the disastrous combination of Corbyn and Labour's anti-democratic Brexit policy. Now, let's check out the final clip from this leaked phone call. If, if it works out alright, and you know, as 
I assume you both hope, and there's a you know, some sort of workable majority for, for Johnson. How long do you reckon it take Labour to get get that back together and get rid of Corbyn? And get, I mean, we talked you know, we talked about this before, haven't we? It's, obviously, things work better if you've got two decent parties trying to make each other up their games. At the moment, you guys are just all over the fucking place. I know. I know. Well, that's the thing that a lot of us are, you know, is on our minds. How, how long do you reckon you can? How long do you reckon it'll take to switch it around? I mean, is he irremovable now because of, of the NEC and stuff, or what? No, I think I think I think things can change quickly. I think things change more quickly generally now in uh, ties. I think things are more fluid anyway. But mm. uh, uh, yeah, anyway, maybe that's a conversation another day. Well, to finish it up, John Ashworth thinks it won't take long to change things in the Labour Party after the election. Ashworth even suggests a lot of people in Labour are thinking about it already. So the chances of Corbyn being gone not long after the election are high and ties into what I covered the other day regarding John McDonald's reported plan to overthrow Corbyn shortly after the election. Now what I have shown you in this video is not the entire leaked phone call. It's just some of the juicier parts of it. I have linked the Guido Fawkes journalist Tom Harwood's YouTube channel who uploaded the leaked call to YouTube earlier today and gave me permission to use it freely. So be sure to check him out and watch the full video on his channel as it's all pretty epic to be honest. But in what seems like a desperate attempt as I said earlier at damage control, Jonathan Ashworth appeared on the BBC Politics live show a few hours after the story broke where he had his testicles roasted on an open fire by BBC host Fiona Bruce and LBC's Ian Dow when he claims he was only joking in the leaked phone call, which as you heard, nothing he said was joking. It was a very frank and honest opinion given to his friend, who like I said, is a bit of a snake for doing it, but I'm not complaining that he did it, because like I've said, it's epic. So let's see a quick clip from the Politics Live show before I end this video. There is a story that's caused oh, a bit of a storm. What a day I'm having, oh, eh? Absolutely, and I don't think <laughs> it's going to... I don't think it's going to get any, any better. No, I know um, This was a private conversation that you had oh, uh, no, with no. a friend of yours, a close friend, you Clearly said. Clearly not a, Tory, a friend anymore, a Tory, is he? A Tory activist, <laughs> and you've described it just as, as banter, is that right? Yeah, it was, because he's a Tory activist. Uh, Greg, Greg Baker down in Canterbury, he's the chief executive... Um, uh, Optum, I think, a, a political intelligence agency. Um, so if you've got a contract with them, I mean, I'd start questioning it because whether you can trust this fellow. All right. right. Well, uh, but anyway, the point is this, right? I, he he was ringing. Me, I was talking to him. He was saying all oh, my his sources at the CCHQ say you know Labour's doing well, and I'm doing the old sort of you know what Alex Ferguson would do, football managers trying to think, trying to psych him out, saying no, you're going to win. Don't worry about it because I know he's an activist in Canterbury. I'm trying to make him complacent. Obviously, I look upon Cano. I was a smart aleck, too clever by half. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, well, what, you, this, you said this about Jeremy, you said that about the Labour Party. Well, I'm deliberately throwing the Tory attack lines back at him mm. to say, oh, this is what we're oh, getting. All right, well, look, you said, you said it was banter, you were just talking with a friend. It's a good try. Let's it's a good try. Hang on, hang on. Let's, oh, no, have, a, let's, oh, have, a li let's have a listen, and then uh, people can make up their own mind. No. Would he, would he... It's not going to happen. Stop worrying. It's not going to happen. If he got in, would he be as bad as I expected? Right, well, obviously, you're going to have to excuse. banter in my voice. No, it's well, not. It's, it's, hang on, hang on. That I haven't even banter. started. We'll let you in in a moment. I'm trying to think Ian. of the line Jonathan, to give him. That's Jonathan, why I'm I know this is embarrassing for you. Of course, it's embarrassing. Of course, it's embarrassing. But you I look a right You do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't have to watch any more of that. Joe Coburn absolutely destroyed him. At the start, we have a bit of tit for tat going on there by Ashworth, who like an idiot claims it was banter, when as I said, and we all know, it really wasn't. He sounded deadly serious in his phone conversation, which of course he was expecting would not be heard by anyone else. And now he's trying to out the guy who leaked it, because until now, his name was not public to my knowledge which is a bit of a low blow, but considering the guy leaked his phone call, is not really surprising. 
The real issue I have with him leaking his name is that it's likely to set the momentum lunatics on him and his business, which is never good and you shouldn't do. But Ashworth's pathetic attempts to claim it was only banter and he was just pulling the guy's leg, I have to call instant bullshit on, as Ian Dow and Joe Coburn did. The sound recording does not lie and neither does the way it was delivered, including the fact some of it has been discussed by these two privately before, as we heard. It's a slam dunk, literally. You got caught out, John, at the end of the day because I guess this guy thought keeping Corbyn out of government was more important than keeping his friend. The greater good and all that. Which, by the sound of it, Ian Ashworth himself supports, if not publicly. Who knows, he might soon do that. But on that note, I am going to end the video there, guys. I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. This parliament is a dead parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. Is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it away. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr. Speaker, when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.